Hello. I'm going to do a relatively quick run through on the proof of concept I've been working on. So I think first what we'll need to do is head over to the uh, kind of the, the design that we have set up here. So uh, what we have here is we have a uh, robot network. And in our case, it's the uh, SotaBots Team 2557 network. So it's a 10.25.57. whatever network address. Those guys are all plugged into one switch, which is then plugged into a tempered network's hip switch, 100E, which is all Ethernet. That then goes through a firewall, which is uh, completely locked from letting anybody from the Internet into it. Okay, so the firewall is actually being a firewall. It's actually blocking everything inbound. This guy right here, he can go outbound to the Internet. So now to the Internet, we have a hip relay. And the hip relay is a device that would let one hip switch from behind a locked firewall connect to another hip switch, in this case, uh, a Windows virtual running on my Mac that has a Windows hip client on it, going through another firewall that's completely blocked off from anybody trying to enter it from the internet. That's what that bad boy does. Makes the internet a safer place and... Uh, really helps out IT with not having to run rules and permissions on their firewalls. So that's pretty cool. So my home network, which is where I'm sitting at right now, it actually doesn't matter for this. Uh, I could be at a Starbucks. I could be at a library. I could be anywhere with Wi-Fi. I can even be using my phone as uh, a tether, as a hotspot, and the NAT to double NAT that the phone companies do still wouldn't prevent this action from happening. So... Kind of just to go over it real quick, Robo Rios on their own network, it's non-routable. My laptop is on its own network, it's not routable. The firewall routes for me, and that routes me out to the internet where I can see the hip relay. These guys plug into a switch, which goes to a hip switch, which routes through out the firewall to the hip relay. When the hip relay sees a communications request from both of these hip clients, it runs it through without decrypting it, by the way. So it's all still really secure. And uh, you now have your network connection without um, having to have firewall access or certain ports created for it. So let's get to the good stuff here. So this is the uh, this is the uh, Windows 10 Virtual, and uh, we can come down here real quick. You can see that we're running the Temper Networks HIP client. It's connected. Everybody's happy. Oh no, no robot communication. Okay, well, so these are the cameras that are on the 102557 network. That's the, those are the, the RPI cam. It's uh, one Raspberry Pi with two cameras attached to it. And uh, we have another device here, which is actually a power controller. And that's also on the 102557 network because obviously you don't want a robot running when nobody's using it. That, 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 could, that could be bad. So, uh, so what I'll do first is I'll turn on the accessories and one of the accessory items actually happens to be a light. And so now you'll see the light turns on. It's nighttime. So you can uh, see the Robo Rio. You can see all of its connections. This is this 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 camera placement is so developers can see what's plugged into where. Um, and then this is actually a top down of the robot where you can see the wheels and you can see the Robo Rio um, and the uh, the talons and the power supply. That black box right there in the middle is actually a hip switch 100 E. That's a product that we make at Temper Networks. And it is uh, plugged into Ethernet, and that's what is going through the firewall in that previous picture. So there are those guys. So the next thing that we're going to do, you'll see there's no robot communication. Um, here is the code for our robot. Okay, so the next thing what I want to do is I want to go and turn on the robot. So let's go back over here, and let's go to the controller. Let's fire up the robot and watch the lights come on. Bink! Look at that. We got robot juice. That's awesome. And uh, I can actually go back to the drive station here and we'll watch it connect. So the benefit of this is a student who's not in the school or who may be, it may be summer vacation and nobody's in the school, no teachers or anybody like that, um, but the student wants to log in and do some coding and testing this would allow them to do that so you can see the robots up teleop disabled so real quick just to kind of go through the whole gamut because 
This video is already taking a while. Uh, I'm going to come up here and I'm actually going to deploy the code. So, think. Okay, you can see it's going through the network accessing 10.255.7.2, which is the RoboRio, and, uh, and is deploying its code. So what we'll do now is we'll come back here, and uh, let's go ahead and drop this guy down. And you'll see that the teleop is uh, disabled. I'm going to go ahead and close this window. Uh, the 100E is a 10 megabit device, which is actually perfect because competition, they give you a, a 10 meg pipe to work with. So it's, uh, it, it's actually a little more realistic. And if you have two cameras running pulling 4 megabit, then things begin to slow down. So now the code's been deployed because it was slow. That's why I killed that other thing. Rebooted. Teleops now uh, disabled. So now I'm going to come over. I'm going to enable it. Um, real quick. I know it's a little dark and I apologize for that. But here's an FRC approved Logitech controller. It's plugged into my MacBook Pro. This is my nerd out moment. My MacBook Pro. I've actually got it running VirtualBox. And that's where the Windows 10 VM is running. <laughs> and I've got the controller piped through through USB. Uh, somebody told me uh, a little while ago you couldn't do this, so I decided that I was going to show them that that's wrong, and here's the proof of concept of that too. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to go ahead and enable the robot. And I'm going to take the controller in my right hand, so I'm holding it kind of weird, but that... Oh, I need better. There. So this stick right here is what's programmed to drive. And we're going to go look at the top wheels there. And now I'm going to go ahead and watch those wheels as I move forward. There we go. And then uh, move backwards. Yay! Everybody's a hero. So anyways, you see in this concept that you can do everything as if you were standing right next to the robot. There's a little bit of lag. It's based on bandwidth. Um, I turn the resolution down on this guy to make it go faster. I just need to turn the frame rate up some more. I'm sure it'll be fine. But uh, that's it, guys. Everything's working. And um, we should be able to move forward with this. I've got a couple developers already tied into it who will be testing it. And uh, as the kickoff begins, I'm sure we'll be adding more developers so they'll be able to test it as well, along with maybe creating a couple more of these and tying them in. Um, I guess one thing I can add really quickly is that you saw the address of the Rio, and it's I hard coded it 10.255.7.2. Um, you can actually have multiple robots on this. Uh, uh, I should say this overlay. You can have multiple robots all with the same IP address, and in order to avoid the IP con conflict, you give policy from one set of developers to one robot and another set of developers to another robot. So there is no, you have to change out the IP address when you're deploying code from Eclipse or connecting on the dashboard. You don't have to change any IP addresses. That's kind of the benefit of the identity defined network and doing segmenting uh, with the network. So it's, uh, you, you can have one overlay uh, and you can segment that entire network so you don't have any IP address conflicts. It's kind of dirty, guys. And this is what, this is what allows us to do cool things like this, which would be letting students and uh, you know, even mentors on some teams jump in and develop code uh, all year round without having to be at the robot or getting access to the school. So anyway, uh, it's like nine minutes. I've totally yapped, and I hope that this wasn't boring. So thanks, everybody. Peace.